Howdy folks, John here, doing a uh, DIY repair video today. Haven't done one in a while. Hopefully it's a repair. Our little Blu-ray player has crapped out and it won't even turn on anymore. There's a disc in it, can't even get it out. If I try to power it up, it just beeps. Not even every time. I can't eject the disc. So got to open it up anyway to uh, get the disc out, but hopefully we can repair this thing. This actually started acting up a few weeks ago, you know, about halfway through the movie, it would crap out and that time duration got shorter and shorter. And uh, last night I tried it again, I put the disc in and didn't even get through the menu before it failed. And now of course we can't even turn it on to get the disc out. So that kind of tells me this was something that has been failing over time. And it's acting a lot like a bad capacitor. And bad electrolytic capacitors are one of the most common things that fail on today's electronics. They're not made nearly as good as they used to be. Or maybe it's just the higher switching rates of uh, the switch mode power supplies. But regardless, the reason they are a common thing that fail, they're easy to replace. And if that's the problem, I thought I'd show you the uh, process. So to get the disc out, we just have to uh, take this cover off, but I thought we'd first look at the board here. So we've got, uh, this is our power supply board here. And then of course, this is the main logic board for the Blu-ray player. So we're not gonna touch anything in there. This stuff though, is where most of the problems usually occur. And I don't know if you can see this. I can already kind of see the problem. These two electrolytic caps, you can see they're bulged. This one's actually leaking. There's some brown shit staining on the top of it. This one's just starting. And that's generally a telltale sign that they are shot. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a way to check these if you've got an oscilloscope and a function generator, my quick little checking method. But just visually, these look very suspect and I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is the problem. So we are going to pull this board out and replace these two caps and see if we can fix this thing. First thing we've got to do is disconnect the power supply from the logic board. Just got this little connector here. And then we've got three screws. And then this should just lift right out. There we go. Now, hopefully we can zoom in on this. See it a bit better. Is it focusing, there we go. So yeah, you can see they're bulged and ballooned. Sometimes you'll see leaking underneath as well. Don't see it on these, but you can definitely tell they're bulged. Yeah, so you just want to locate your capacitors that uh, you want to replace and then just turn the board over and look underneath where the pins are. Now you can use solder wick and a soldering iron to uh, suck that solder up or one of those plunger solder suckers. I've got an actual little desoldering tool for this. Use whatever method you like though. So these little buggers should just pull out now. There we go. And you want to check the values of them. I think they're both the same. Yes, they are. So they're rated at uh, 16 volt, 2200 microfarads. Uh, you could go higher in voltage, not lower though, uh, but you do have to stick with the uh, basically the same microfarad rating. If you don't have any, you're gonna have to order them up. I'm just gonna run to my uh, capacitor bin and see if I've got any. Okay, looks like we do have some. And 2200 microfarads, 16 volt. A Little bit smaller, uh, not too thrilled about that, no big deal, but I'm guessing these ones are even crappier than these ones. But 
we'll get them in and see if it works. So to uh, put these in, you have to make sure you recognize the polarity. Electrolytic caps will always have the negative pin marked in some fashion like this, usually a stripe. And uh, on your circuit board, it should be labeled as well. Here it's showing there's a little plus sign and a plus sign. Of course, if you remembered what orientation they were before they came out, that's even better in case you can't find that. And even on the back of the board, there's a plus and a plus. So we'll just turn our soldering iron on right now. And we will fire these in. Like so. Just going to tack one here. Just to hold them. There we go. Now we can do a proper job. Just get some side cutters or something just to chop the uh, leads off. Just confirm you've got the uh, polarity right, which we do. And we'll get this thing back in the Blu-ray player and see if it works. Okay, so plug it in. Make sure no sparks come flying out. I'm going to put the cover on yet until we know it's working. Okay, hopefully you can see this. There's not too much glare from the lights. Well, it's working. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Got our disc out. Should probably uh, play it and see if it even works. And there we go, it works. So that's all there is to replacing electrolytic capacitors. Very simple, very inexpensive, and save this from going to the landfill or the recycling depot, and probably saved a hundred bucks. I don't even know what a Blu-ray player is worth now that nowadays. Now I should point out, electrolytic caps that fail won't always show bulging and leaking like this. What happens is the uh, ESR climbs in them, and if it climbs enough, they heat up, and that's what makes the electrolyte, you know, expand and bulge and burst within them. But you can get increasing ESR and not have any visual signs. I'd say at least 70-75% of the caps I replace, uh, they are showing physical signs, though, of failure like this. But a good 25% don't. And I'm going to just show you an easy way to check these if you've got an oscilloscope and a function generator. So one way you can try to check electrolytic caps is if you've got a digital multimeter with a capacitance scale on it, you can try. This isn't really ideal. It doesn't really show if you've got uh, high ESR in your capacitor but it will at least give you a ballpark value. And this is showing 175 microfarads on something that's supposed to be 2200. So uh, yeah, certainly if we go by the multimeter as well here, these would definitely be shot. This one's a bit better. Oh yeah, and this one, this is the one that was showing the most shit staining. This one's got less. This one's a little bit healthier. So going by the multimeter, that kind of checks out. But if you really want to find out if a cap is working the way it should, you can use a 
an oscilloscope, and a function generator. So all I've done here, this is how I usually check caps. I set my function generator to about 100 kilohertz. You can go anywhere between, you know, 100 and probably 500 kilohertz, but 100 kilohertz, no big deal. And I set the peak to peak voltage at one volt. That's pretty safe for most caps. And I select a square wave. There we go. So we're showing 100 kilohertz, roughly one volt peak to peak. Pan down to our makeshift drawing board. So if this is our function generator, okay, we're coming out and we're going to put the capacitor, this will be plus minus, we're going to put the capacitor, is that the negative? I forget the symbol, I forget the polarity. Anyway, we're going to put the capacitor across the function generator and then we're going to put our uh, oscilloscope, probe it on either side. The same way a pressure tank works for water, a uh, capacitor absorbs lows and highs in voltage, so it absorbs ripple voltage. So if a capacitor is working correctly, this square waveform should basically go to zero. It should basically short this waveform out. And we will check it with a good capacitor first. And again, polarity you have to observe the polarity, so make sure you hook the positive side up from your function generator to the positive, negative to the negative. And there we can see that we have effectively absorbed that square waveform. We're getting a zero voltage. Just ignore these little spikes. That's just uh, noise in the wiring. Uh, we'd see that if we were to short, direct short this out as well. We'd see those exact same spikes. So that's just in the wiring. Don't uh, pay any attention to it. That's normal. But that's what a good capacitor will show. Zero voltage. It's completely suppressed, that square waveform. Now if we hook one of our bad capacitors back up here, which is the worst one? The one with the poop stains on the lid. I'll hook this one up. And hopefully you can see that. No longer is it zeroing it out. Now that's that's a bad cap. We're actually getting at a hundred millivolts per scale, we're getting two hundred millivolts of noise that's getting through this capacitor into the circuit at uh, 100 kilohertz at one volt peak to peak. There's a pretty good reason why that Blu-ray player was not functioning. And a capacitor doesn't have to look bad to be shot. You know, here's one that looks fine physically. It's a 470 by 16 volt. But if we hook it up here, and there's lots of information online how to check capacitors with oscilloscopes. So if you're interested in this method, do a little research. There's all kinds of things you can do. Yeah, look at this. This isn't even suppressing any of that wave. It's rounding it off a bit, but that's it. Totally garbage. Bucket. That's it. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy cap replacement. We'll see you next time.